Welcome everyone to my thesis defense presentation titled Hematological Profiles Associated with Productive Performance in Astro State and Grass Fed Beef Heifers. I will follow a typical scientific outline followed by some final comments on my master's experience. Feed costs and reproductive losses are two major expenses affecting the profitability within the beef industry. Improvements made to feed costs, such as improvements made to feed efficiency, and to reproductive losses, such as improvements made to estrus detection, may share links with energy metabolism. One method to improve feed efficiency is by selection for residual feed intake, or RFI, which was first described by Koch in 1963 as the actual feed intake subtract the predicted feed intake. RFI is considered to be a heritable trait, which may lead to the widespread improvement of feed efficiency across the beef industry. To further understand the differences in feed efficiency between individuals, we can, understand, we can study the underlying biology of feed efficiency. By identifying feed efficient phenotypes, this can help to select the feed efficient genotype through the widespread selection of RFI, which has been studied using hematological measures. For the lifetime productivity of a breeding female, the age of puberty has an effect on the number of estrous cycles prior to the breeding season, which can have an effect of the age at the first calving, which relies on successful estrous detection, which may be done by the producer or by the bull. Hematological measures have been studied previously, such as the complete blood cell count, in relation to energy metabolism. This also included immunoglobulin responses and plasma metabolic profiling. Factors which may influence energy metabolism include factors such as age, body composition, body weight, and physiological states including pregnancy and estrus. It was hypothesized that identifying hematological measures associated with feed efficiency and estrus state may lead to an increased understanding of the biological processes associated with metabolic fluctuations and identify proxies for these complex traits. The objectives were to evaluate CPC parameters, specific IgG1 and IgM responses, and blood plasma metabolic profiles relative to feed efficiency classification in forage-fed replacement beef heifer calves and pregnant beef heifers. To characterize blood plasma analytes in beef heifers during the estrus and non estrous states, and to compare the metabolic profile during estrus in relation to age, feed efficiency, body size, body fatness, and leanness categories. The first study, Associations between Blood Cells, Immune Response, and Plasma Metabolic Profile with Productive Performance and Grass-Fed Replacement Beef Heifers, was accepted with revisions by the Journal of Animal Production Science. In this study, the complete blood count was compared to feed efficiency in replacement beef heifers. The complete blood cell count has a number of parameters related to red blood cells, the white blood cells, as well as blood proteins. Humoral immune response challenge was also completed in terms of feed efficiency, and it's been shown previously that animals with an improved immune response also have an improved productive performance which has been measured using a response by immunoglobulins to an unfamiliar antigen. A list of 26 metabolites were combined based on a number of tissues and biochemical processes which, are, which have been linked to energy metabolism and will be further compared to feed efficiency. To do this, 107 heifer calves and 31 pregnant yearlings were sourced from, sourced from 19 beef producers from the three maritime provinces. They were feed tested for 124 days at the Maritime Beef Testing Society in Nepal. Performance evaluation was completed approximately every 30 days. The heifers were fed a diet of 99.5% haylage and a 0.5% vitamin premix. And the hematological measures of the CBC analysis and immune challenge and metabolic profiling were compared to on, were determined for each heifer. The breed composition was determined by a hair follicle DNA extraction using the 50K SNP sequencing, and was the estimation of individual and population breed allele frequencies was determined using pairwise comparison. 
From the top pie chart, you can see that the primary breed of the heifer calves was Angus, and in the pregnant heifers, it was primarily polled Hereford. For a timeline of the performance evaluation, the performance evaluation was completed approximately every 30 days, taking the body weights, body composition, ultrasound for back fat, rump fat, marbling, as well as ribeye area, and a blood sample. At the beginning and end of the performance evaluations, uh, the C CBC analysis was completed on each heifer. And about the midpoint in the feed testing, the immune challenge was completed between days 56 and 77. For the humoral immune challenge, an initial blood sample was taken to get the baseline immunoglobulin concentrations, which was followed by a vaccine composed of ovalbumin protein, which was followed by a blood sample 14 days later to get the primary immunoglobulin response to the protein and included an additional booster of ovalbumin, followed by another blood sample on day 21 for the secondary immunoglobulin response. For the RFI models, both the heifer calves and pregnant yearling models accounted for average daily gain, body size, as well as body composition and age. Pregnant heifers also accounted for the days in gestation. For the statistical analysis, normality was tested and ensured. The general linear model was used to compare the productive performance parameters, which also included the breed composition the CBC parameters and the immune parameters, which were compared by dividing the population into halves, and the immune parameters was also split into thirds, and used the following model. For the repeated measures, it was compared using the mixed procedure and the following model. For some results, mean corpuscular volume and mean cell hemoglobin were both higher and inefficient heifer calves, which may be related to the oxygen use in animals that are less feed efficient and may be related to the oxygen carrying capacity of a feed efficient animal. Segmented neutrophils were higher in both inefficient heifer calves as well as the pregnant yearlings, which may be related to the susceptibility of stress in the inefficient animals. Lymphocytes were higher in both the efficient heifer calves as well as the efficient pregnant yearlings which may be related to the available oxygen, as mentioned previously, with the hemoglobin feed efficient heifers may have a reduced demand for oxygen, which may provide for oxygen for oxidative phosphorylation and the production of ATP for the lymphocytes. For the immune results in discussion, pregnant heifers showed a greater secondary IgM response in comparison to the heifer calves, which may be related to the age of the pregnant heifers and their ability to produce immunoglobulins. In terms of feed efficiency, the more efficient heifer calves showed a greater secondary IgM response in comparison to the animals which were less feed efficient, which may be related to the productive performance of these heifers as well as their immune function. Plasma phosphorus was higher in the efficient Efficient heifer calves, which may be related to the production of ATP. Alkaline phosphatase was higher in the inefficient heifer calves, which may be related to the isoforms of ALP and the stage of growth of these heifers. Plasma potassium was higher in the efficient heifers, which may be related to the greater, to greater protein synthesis in the inefficient heifer calves. In the pregnant heifers, Higher concentrations of cholesterol in the inefficient and higher concentrations of NEFA in the efficient towards the end of pregnancy may signify less lipogenesis and more lipolysis towards the end of pregnancy, which has been shown previously in the literature. Greater concentrations of alkaline phosphatase in the efficient heifers may again be related to the isoforms of ALP and may be related to the uteral production of ALP. Creatinine in the efficient heifers may be related to the uh, energetic demands of the muscle during this period in the pregnancy in the pregnant heifers. In conclusion, hematological measures have the potential to be used as indirect assessments of feed efficiency in peripubertal heifer calves and pregnant yearlings. 
Higher concentration of potassium and phosphorus in the efficient heifer calves may explain greater efficiency during stages of growth and development. Efficient pregnant heifers appear to have reduced metabolic demands of the liver during pregnancy, as indicated by lower concentration of cholesterol and globulin. Physiological state should be taken into consideration when measuring hematological measures identified as proxies for feed efficiency. In the second study, metabolic profile of beef heifers during estrus and non estrus states was prepared for submission to the Journal of Reproduction in Domestic Animals. During the estrus state, specifically the estrus day, fluctuations in estradiol as well as LH and FSH result in changes in behaviors, which give us our estrus signs. Specifically, this change in estradiol, which leads to changes in estrus behaviors. Some signs of estrus include physical, such as vulva swelling, mucus, and color, behavioral, such as mounting and bellowing, and hormonal changes, such as profile of progesterone. Some methods used in the industry to detect estrus include pedometers, which measure differences in activity, ultrasonography of the corpus luteum, infrared imaging of the vulva area as well as the muzzle to detect different changes in body temperature, as well as some common methods commonly used such as tail painting, estrus detection software systems, and some visual detection systems such as the camera patch in the bottom right. These methods may be further enhanced by using hematological measures, which may be related to the energy metabolism of these heifers during the estrus state. To do this, 107 heifer calves were observed for estrus twice daily for 124 days. Feed intake and productive performance, including body weight and composition, were measured approximately every 30 days, similarly to the previous study. Feed efficiency was again determined using RFI. And blood plasma samples were collected during signs of estrus and every 30 days. For the estrus detection, the heifers were observed in both morning and evening hours for signs such as mounting, bawling, and restlessness. We also observed changes in the estrus detection patches that were applied for, to each heifer for changes in color and increased scratching. If the heifer was considered to be an estrus, she was brought inside to the handling facility and was further examined for physical signs, including vulva color, edema, and mucus. If the heifer was considered to be an estrus, a blood sample was taken from the jugular vein and was assessed for blood plasma progesterone concentrations, where concentrations less than 0.6 nanograms per mil were considered an estrus, and the metabolic profile was assessed in both the estrus and non estrus samples. For the statistical analysis, normality was tested and ensured. The GLAM procedure was used to compare the plasma metabolites during both the estrus and non estrus states in the 71 samples using the following model, which accounted for breed. Plasma metabolites were compared across the extremes of the phenotypic classifications for age, body weight, the ultrasound traits measured, as well as RFI, taking in the top 18 and bottom 18.25%. Logistic regression procedure fitted all the analytes differed in least square means between the estrus and non estrus states to identify the estrus probability using blood plasma metabolites. And the variation at the plasma metabolite in relation to RFI was determined using the variance importance analysis procedure, which compared the metabolites to the feed efficiency variation. For the results, blood plasma, calcium, sodium, and osmolality were decreased during the estrus state, which may be related to the changes in total plasma volume during the estrus state in comparison to the non-estrus. Globulin and total protein were also decreased during the estrus state, which may be related to a change in protein turnover during estrus. BHBA was increased during the estrus state, which indicates a greater mobilization of lipids during the estrus and an energetic shift during the estrus state. ALP, AST, and CK were higher during the estrus state, which may be related to an increase energetic demands of the liver 
as well as the muscle during the ester state. T3 was also higher during the ester state and has interestingly been related to other changes in the metabolites observed in the study, such as changes in plasma ions, uh, AST, ALP, as well as BHBA. From the logistic regression, ALP, AST, BHBA, CK, and T3 can increase the certainty of detecting esters by 91.5%. And by measuring T3 alone, you can increase the certainty of identifying esters by three times. In heifers which were younger and leaner during esters, globulin, total protein, and creatine kinase were greater during the ester state, which could indicate greater protein turnover in these heifers. The heifers which were heavier and fatter revealed greater concentrations of sodium and a greater osmolality during the ester state which may be related to the water content of, le of lean and fat tissue, which may provide less water for the dissociation of the ions in these tissues during esters. In terms of feed efficiency, metabolites which, which pass the line across the middle of the graft show greater variation with feed efficiency. For cholesterol, so the greatest variation with feed efficiency, followed by GLH and GGT. And interestingly, phosphorus and potassium also showed a variation with feed efficiency, similarly to the previous study. In conclusion, the ester state is strongly associated with the fluctuations of ALP, AST, BHBA, CK, and T3. These analytes, especially T3, they increase the certainty of identifying the ester state. The effects of age, feed efficiency, body size, and composition should be taken into consideration when assessing meta metabolite profiles in heifers for estrus detection. For the general discussion, the metabolic profiles of both studies are combined into one figure. Here you can see how the metabolic profiles can change according to energy metabolism, metabolism as well as physiological state. I'd like to thank my coworkers for their involvement in this study, which include over 32,000 kilometers of travel back and forth to the farm and over 3,000 hours of work. I'd like to thank my advisor, Dr. Yuri Montanulli, my committee members, Dr. Alan Fredine and Dr. Kendall Swanson, Dr. Dr. Neil Carroll from the University of Guelph, the staff of the Maritime Beef Testing Society, and the 19 maritime beef producers who contributed animals to this work. And without them, we couldn't have done this research. I'd also like to thank our funding agencies. As for my master's experience, I was fortunate to be able to present at several scientific conferences, including the Canadian Society of Animal Science Conference, which was held in Ottawa, Ontario as well as the Federation, uh, European Federation of Animal Science, which was held in Warsaw, Poland, and the Livestock Gentech Conference, which was held in Edmonton, Alberta. During my master's, I also strived to remain active within the industry. This included some extension work with the maritime beef producers, producing a number of reports that went back to the beef producers. I was also honored to be selected as a cattleman into the Cattleman Young Leaders Program, where I'm shown here with my mentor, John Baker. And I was able to speak about my CYL experience at the Maritime Beef Conference, which was held in Moncton, New Brunswick this year. And I just returned back from Montevideo, Uruguay, where I took part in the World Herford Conference, where I was able to expand my network within the industry globally.